guys doing? Let's get this on, y'all. We are going to be doing a chit chat. Y'all know how we do this. We talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV. I'm also going to start adding a little bit of what's in the news type of stuff. Not going to get too depressing, but just share my thoughts and opinions of some things that's going on. Because, girl, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Well, is that, is that how you say it, girl? No, that ain't how you say it, country ass. So, anyway. <laughs> All right, y'all, while we're doing this, we're going to be um, detangling my hair and I am using a great product. I have not tried this before, but I do have a review coming up very soon, possibly this week. The main choice, proceed with caution line, the four-way conditioner. This is the business, okay? And great slip. And yeah, that's what I'm going to be used to be detangling my hair. <coughs> To figure out what's going on so y'all everything's going good and well in texas weather is crazy bipolar as weather the weather changes at the drop of a dime like seriously right now it's very windy rainy my hair <laughs> yeah so yeah so my mom i came down from from east texas uh, this past weekend, she stayed with us for three days. We had such a good time. She gave me a stand mixer. She cleaned my kitchen for two hours. <laughs> Mind you, my kitchen was clean, but my mother uh, works in dietary at the school. She's, she's the school lunch lady, one of them. And so, and this is what she's done all her life, you know, working in kitchens. So she knows how to clean a kitchen. And I wasn't complaining. I even told her, I said, you can come down once a month if you want to, to do this kitchen justice. Mm, excuse me, y'all. So yeah, we went out to eat. We hung out. My best friend came over one day because she's um, in the midst of selling her house. Her and her family are moving. I'm like, girl, but she's moving only 20 minutes away. So it's not too, too, too bad. And she bought her family and her baby. Y'all, I'm a sucker for a baby. I love, and her baby, when I tell you that child is, that child is so precious, but she is big. She is chubby. Oh my God, I love it. She's 18 months old, wearing three, three T. I love it. Um, but yeah, we all had a good time. We had a good time. Um, Jamie's at school. That's why it's quiet. It's his first week at this private school. And it's set up very similar to a micro school or a smaller school, I should say. My hair is shedding like crazy. And so, yeah, we're excited and for him to be trying out this new school. Baby, I, those of you who are teachers, I really do sympathize with you guys. Um, his last week at this public school, y'all, I had to really, I know I keep talking about this school, but this is it. I won't be talking about it anymore because he won't be there. But let me just say this. I sympathize for you out there who are teachers. I don't know what it is about my personality. A lot of... Not a lot, but sometimes people um, confide in me to things that they're going through. I don't know if it's the energy I give off, if I have the ability to empathize with others. And so, like, his last day there, she, like, confided in a lot of stuff, which I'm not going to share everything on here because I just don't want to do that. But she basically, long story short, said that she understands. She totally gets why I pulled, why I pulled JB out. And that is actually her last, she's quitting. It's her last year. She can't, like, it's, it's so, she's so stressed out that it's messing up her health. And her husband wants her to quit. Her doctor is telling her to quit. So this is it for her. And so, y'all, the, the kids are, oh my God, it, it's just a mess. And so uh, the last straw for me was when I picked him up, picked JB up. She ran up to me immediately because I guess she wanted to catch me before JB could tell me. So she's basically like, I, I want to apologize. There was an incident that happened in the classroom. Apparently, uh, another child had wrote a message about JB, some type of sat satanic stuff, writing, wishing death on JB. I said, what? I was not expecting that. I was expecting maybe pushing, you know, a physical altercation. Not this bullshit. So she's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. She's like, I don't know what these kids are doing and why their parents are letting them watch certain stuff. 
So she said I was able to catch it and I, I threw it away. I don't think I don't think JB saw it, but she ended up sending the child to the principal office for the rest of the day. Like he could not come back in the classroom. Matter of fact, JB said the next day he wasn't allowed to come back because it was going to be JB's last day. What the look? Let me tell you something. When she told me that, look at my hair. I immediately prayed over my child because you don't know, like she said, she doesn't know what these kids are exposed to. You don't know what people are exposing their children to. A lot of parents now, not a lot, but some parents nowadays allow their children to look at whatever on TV. And quite frankly, you don't know what people are into. Their parents could be into stuff. So she said he wrote some type of basically wishing death on JB Andrew a Pentagon. I'm like, oh no. So you best believe I pleaded the blood of Jesus over this child. Um, and he ended up going, he didn't, he didn't want to go to school the next day, but I ended up letting him go, but I picked his ass up early. Oh yes, he did a half a day. So he's at this new school. Um, I met the teachers a couple of times. There's two teachers in the classroom. Um, and yeah, yeah, we're excited for that. Um, but speaking of JB, ever since JB was in the first grade, there was questions whether or not he either had a learning disability or if there were some behavior issues going on. Because although you guys don't see it a lot, JB, JB is extremely intelligent, very intelligent. But JB also has, tension, has temper tantrums at still, you know, nine. He just turned nine. Uh, the counselor at the old school, actually, I, I brought up to her that I feel like there's some there's something going on. His teacher, while he was in Phoenix, also felt, actually all the teachers he had felt like something was going on, but no one could pinpoint it. So the teacher did say, I think that JB has attention deficit disorder, which, you know, a lot of kids have. So we have an appointment with a pediatrician here to get him formally diagnosed to see what we can do. Um, I did give him, he has a whole bucket full of fidget toys because he needs that. Um, <laughs> one, one year... <laughs> Last year, the teacher at the school in Phoenix, uh, I guess some of the other kids were complaining because when JB's doing his work, he's humming and they can't concentrate because JB's singing and humming to, you know, so stuff like that where he has to do something to work. Um, and typical attention deficit issues, he gets way off subject. When I give JB instructions, it's bare minimum. If he needs, if I, okay, so put it like this. I can't say, JB, your clothes are on the couch. Put on your clothes. And then when you're done, go brush your teeth. And I want you to eat you some um, cereal. I can't say that. I have to caveman talk. Put on your clothes, brush your teeth, eat your breakfast. Do you see what I'm saying? Because all the details in there, he's not going to get. So I have to be very, 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 specific, very, like, bigger picture. We'll do the details when we get down to it. So yeah, that's going on. But besides that, JB, JB's good. He's a good boy. And um, my mother was very impressed at how uh, clean he kept his room. He keeps his room. That's one thing I will say about this child. Um, he's very meticulous of his stuff. So you can go into his room even right now. So his bed isn't made up, but he has no problems. If I tell him to make up his bed, no problem. He'll make up his bed because he knows I'm crazy too. So, but his little old school collection is set up a certain way. And he even has a sign up there. <laughs> he has a sign in his room that basically says, don't touch. He doesn't want you touching his stuff. And we don't. We respect his stuff. and But he keeps his room pretty dang on neat to be a small child. Um, I'm doing some DIY projects at home. I created my own welcome sign. You know, those wooden welcome signs you guys typically see. I'll put a picture over here in front of your door. I did one that says, hey, y'all. <laughs> but I think I'm going to go back and repaint some of the letters because I don't know why the hey isn't showing up how I wanted it. So I, I could be a little bit, maybe that's where Jamie gets it from. I could be a little bit OCD about stuff like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I bought some stuff that's in the news. Child, I am so, oh, y'all, did y'all hear about the kinder care, the daycare where the mama showed up? She was just a little bit late, and we've all done it. Well, you just a little, little late, running to go pick up your child. 
She runs up to pick up her child, her little two-year-old, and the baby is behind it. No one's there. Well, let me back up. The mama ends up calling her sister, the child's aunt. It's like, did you pick up, let's call her Toya. Did you pick up Toya? No, I didn't pick up Toya. She's like, well, it's closed. Where is she? Her sister's like, well, you better call the cops. Then she sees her child walk in front of the, is a door between, two doors in between them. The child looking out the door and looking at her crying. Let me tell you something. I would have called the cops. Oh, yes. I would have called the cops, but I would have broken that door down. I would have found a brick or something and got my baby. You, you best believe. So, um, that's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I think a couple of years ago, I don't know what state it was in. A couple of years ago, there was another situation, another incident where they actually left a baby. Now, to me, a two-year-old is still a baby, but an actual baby that can't walk in the freaking daycare because they thought she she was a doll wow beautiful baby and they they accidentally thought she was a doll so when the father came again everything was dark dark everything was shut off they're breaking the door down and they see y'all it's on um the video is actually on here it's on youtube you can see it break the door down and you could hear the baby and see the baby crying. When that broke, that literally broke my heart to see that baby crying out there in the dark. And the two, -year the two year old, excuse me, will probably is traumatic after this. You know, with a baby, they can, some of them at a certain age, they can forget it. But that two year old will probably not be able to sleep by herself for a while. That's even if she does right now, which, you know, is, is not, you know, uncommon for two year olds to still sleep with someone. So. Then there was another case, man, some of these parents ain't, you know what I mean? They ain't, I follow true crime stuff because I love true crime. So sometimes when it has to do with children, I try not to go down that path because it could be very emotional, but they had shared a picture of a cute little boy. He was so cute. A couple of days ago basically saying this child was run wandering around at night by himself cold wet and he's nonverbal and so they couldn't figure out who he was you know coming to find out his no good dusty ass mama left him out there because she said it's to save him from her six years old I actually thought he was younger than that because he, he's so chubby in the face Six years old, she left her baby out there. You know, anybody could have, at night too, the child was wandering around. So a, a man picked him up and called the cops. Like, how could you do that? So the sad thing about it, y'all, is that the woman's friend recognized the child because they've had, you know, does anyone recognize this child? Does anyone know who the parents of, of this child? So the, the woman's friend saw the picture and she said when i saw that picture i was i was crying because i guess the friend had called her and said can you watch her two she wanted her to watch her two other kids for a while i don't know if the child is autistic or, or have some type of you know there's no excuses and i get it could be stressful as hell. no excuses she could have dropped their baby off at a fire station she could have dropped their baby off at the hospital at night to just disgusting it, it just kills me because you you know and he had little bruises on his face so i don't know if that was from something she did or if he had you know fallen out there because it was dark when she abandoned him and then you got people out here who wish they had children wish they had babies you know wish they had wish they could adopt someone and for her to do that to her own child is just disgusting to me. His sweet little face. Oh, my God. He has the sweetest look. And even if he didn't have a sweet face, you know what I mean? But still, it's disgusting. Um, Besides that, y'all, um, what I'm watching on YouTube. I'm actually watching a little YouTube uh, for a change. Definitely still watching true crime on YouTube. I like to look at, um, I stopped looking at Bailey's. Siri, is that her name? Because she gives off, even though she apologizes sometimes when she be laughing, I think it's more of a nervous laughter when she's doing her stories. But anyway, 
Um, Christina, Christina Randall, she's out in Florida. I love to watch her. Um, there's a couple of other uh, Black True Crimes who I watch. I will be linking some stuff in the cart. Um, and they do highlight cases amongst people of color. I just love it, y'all. Some of the stuff can be a little disturbing. Um, reaction videos by Carlos King. He has the most beautiful locks. Why? Men, men, always, when men go natural, and I, and I know it's the hormones, it's the testosterone, their hair is so thick and beautiful. And he has waist length long locks. His name is Carlos King. He's not here in Dallas. He's, a, he's either in Dallas or Fort Worth, DFW area. I watched some of his videos. He had me cracking up. His commentary has me cracking up. Yeah, so that, um, ciao. Naturally Fashionable. Naturally Fashionable is on this. Her, her platform, some of her content kind of changed towards the, um, let's be more feminine and soft and talking about some of the issues in the black community. Um, she did a video recently though and i guess it was in reaction to another one of the jumping on the this one her name i guess her name is six and she is more on the black women need to again you know be feminine you know in my opinion i'm gonna say this both of them can be problematic in a certain way because you have naturally fashionable who in my opinion she comes off as I'm married. I didn't have kids out of wedlock. I'm winning. And then you have the young lady six that is like, um, I'm not fat. I'm I'm pretty. I'm thin. I'm winning. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like ugh, we're all winning in our own right. Stop this. Stop this. We gotta stop this, y'all. But I, I watch both of them to a certain degree. Um, because I don't have to agree everything with someone to watch them because I'm open like that. You know what I mean? So I'm okay with that to a certain degree. If I see you doing the same, now I'm not subscribed to the young lady six, but I've been subscribed to naturally fashion before a very long time. So yeah, looking at that, um, oh my God, y'all last night I came across YouTube is trippy. Like, have y'all had, do y'all have a couple of people you subscribe to and all of a sudden you get recommendation of one of their videos, you watch their video and come to find out you've missed four or five videos they posted? That's been happening to me a lot lately. So, Sisters with Long Hair. I know some of you guys are subscribed to her. I have been following her for almost 10 years. Actually, it has been 10 years. 10 years. She has this beautiful long hair. Her hair is heat trained, okay, because she flats on, she presses out, and she straightens her hair a lot. Um, tail bone length. So, in the middle, I need to get it together because it's traumatic. It's watching her video, and I clicked on it, and well, the title is like, I sh I'm shaving my head, or I shave my head, and I'm like, what the hell? And so I'm just fast forwarding the video, and it gets to the point to where I see her hair and all these ribbon things, and I'm watching it, and she's cutting her, you know, her hair, and then she can see the long part with the rubber bands, and I'm thinking, what the, what's going on? And you could clearly see bald spots and patches, and I'm thinking, Y'all, at that time, I'm like, oh, I said, oh, she, this is, when I first saw it, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. When I first saw it, I'm like, okay, this is traumatic. This is a traumatic, this is because she was, her voice was cracking when she was explaining that she was going to have several videos coming. It's traumatic. I don't know if something's going on with her mentally, but this is, so I clicked out the video because I was like, I can't, I can't watch this right now. This morning, just this morning, I watched it and then I saw that she had two other videos she her hair is thinning she's balding alopecia i know i'm not pronouncing that print properly but her father has it and if it runs in your family which i didn't know there's a 50 percent chance that you could get it so she, i remember i saw a video from her it's been a while where she was keeping her shedded hair as she was you know putting it on um basically making it like her own wig and i was like wow that girl look at this i'm like wow that's smart you know i was thinking that's a lot of work but 
do you sis and then for this to happen and she explains that she does have an autoimmune disease which i did kind of figure that from her um i thought that she has mentioned that before that she suffered from a um autoimmune disease which is horrible and then she stated that the hair loss came from a trigger and what triggered it was watching the george floyd video y'all i have not seen that entire video and i never will i just saw a lot of those those things i i cannot watch i cannot mm -mm. but and this is why i also you know you guys i tell you guys be very careful what you watch be very your eyes your eyes be careful you have to protect your eyes you have to protect your ears i'm honest to god and so um i love how she's rocking her hair though because half of it's bald and i think the other half is like tracks or something she is rocking this she's a beautiful woman shaving head or not no hair or not but you know she's absolutely right we often get especially as black women um it's just a woman woman in general we are often defined by what we look like and our hair is a big part of the identification oh, cool. so horrible what she's going through but it seems like she's come to terms with it which is so important um and thank god that she started saving her own hair so to use her own hair for a wig for her you know due to her you know having this hair loss and baldness is amazing in my opinion absolutely amazing Besides that, Linda Lynn is posting. She's posting a lot. Now, she posted one video a couple of, hasn't, hasn't been a week, that she's dating. And I'm going to say this because I like Linda. I like Linda a lot. And I, and this is Linda Lynn. Y'all know her from New Orleans, from New Orleans. Linda. But I'm going to say this. And I did say this in, the, in her comments, too. And she's gotten several comments. And so, I'm from one and not on the bandwagon of dating while you're legally still married because I just think that it can cause can cause a lot of issues in the divorce proceedings and just call is cause issues in general with your ex who you're separated with. You know, he can do whatever you want, he wants because clearly he has been, but I'm just gonna leave it as that. So I just don't think that right now is the right time. Not to make, you know, I'm not funny, not laughing at the situation, but um, she just has to be careful. There's nothing wrong, wrong with being in your singleness. And I think she knows that, meaning Linda. There's nothing wrong to having a period or a season of sitting down and basking in that. And so you can learn from what you've gone through and what you're still going going through because it can be traumatic you know going through a separation and a divorce and let's just back up for a second she's had a baby and she's going through a separation in less than a year so there's a lot of heart there's hormones still involved from her having her baby and then you're going into a separation and now you're trying to date now you have no you can try it if you want to baby girl you can try it but i just think it's so wisely and i think she's gotten more comments from women saying don't do it stop from those of us who knows people who's been there gone through there look coming from people I got 12 years on you linda i say if you're going to do it be wise about it but take your time but you also have to think about what type of man who will be willing to go out and you know go out on dates with a woman who hasn't legally separated, legally divorced her husband yet. Just going to put that out there. And I know that, you know, we all have our own opinions. You can do whatever you want. She's grown. Absolutely. I'm speaking from people who I know who did this. No. No, girl. Even when they were just saying, oh, I'm just having fun. It's not just having fun after a while, though. Whew, child, my hair is shedding. Look, this is all, this is a good thing, though. All right, y'all, so that's who all I'm watching on YouTube TV, Tinder Swindler. What the hell is wrong with these women? Have y'all seen it on Netflix? I cannot. And for, for a while there, I was like, what? I saw the jokes. I saw the shade rooms. I'm like, who is this Israeli man? What, what, what are they? Why are they giving him hell, baby? Let me tell you something. I literally had to start over watching this stuff, this um, movie, excuse me, on Netflix at least three times because I just could not believe that women would fall for something like this. I'm not trying to victim blame or anything like that, but I just, 
I'm just scratching my head like who, who? So those of you who don't know, Tinder Swindler is a man, a uh, supposedly billionaire who was meeting these women through a Tinder, multiple women, mind you, and scamming them for money. So you're like, Vivian, how is he scamming them for money? Well, apparently he's coming off as a billionaire, the son to a billionaire, Diamonds, okay? Let me see if I have any notes, you guys. Um, and he was going by the name of Simone LaVey. So this is my thing. And they are looking up LaVey and the LaVey family. And of course, if you Google LaVey, you'll see that um, he is in the diamond industry. But I'm crazy. I would have gone a step further. The LaVey, Mr. LaVey has eight children. And none of those kids named Simon, Shimon. None of them are named that. So that red flag number one. Okay. So he got these women by saying, you know, his life is in danger. Um, he's showing pictures of his body, bodyguard. Peter, it was his bodyguard named Peter. Child, I don't know. Bodyguard is in the ambulance. And that stuff was true. He was in the ambulance, but was his life in danger? Not true. So he's like, hey, can I borrow some money? Um, because I, I, I'm, you know, all my stuff is locked up. I don't know. You know, he's like, hey, I need some, I need some cash because I got to get out of this country and go here. And so these women are like, sure. After only a few weeks of knowing this man, sure. Let me take out a loan. Do what? You know how much money you have to be making to take out a 25000 loan? So they would take out a loan, give him the money. And sometimes he would actually give them money because I believe one woman she let him borrow, I don't know, like a little bit of, little, like five or $6,000. I don't know the exact amount, but let's just say she let him borrow five, $6,000. He paid her back like 10000 But what it was, you guys, was a Ponzi scheme. So he would <laughs> borrow money and then pay this person what this person let him borrow. And that's what he did for years. He swindled these women and it was crazy. And he definitely had a type. If you could tell by their personalities, even the way they look, sort of. Not necessarily, I wouldn't say plain James, but not, this is not anything, this is not being mean. These women were not memorable. I actually don't even remember what they, I don't even remember their hair colors. I believe most of them were blonde, but I don't even remember what their faces look like. So that's what I'm talking about. They weren't strikingly beautiful women. So not to say he had, a physical type, but he definitely had a type. He had a type. And so he served hardly no money on this. These all these women basically went into horrible debt. Like what quarter of a million dollars. He what how much time did he what did he do? Like three months, seven months in jail? He's back out. Um making money, having courses on how <laughs> Is he? I don't know. I just made that up. Does he have courses now, you guys? He's out here living his best life. He has a girlfriend, model. She is she an Israeli model? And so, you know, it's just crazy. Like, how can you? But you know what? This is where, and this is not being judging. This is not me judging anybody. I really am not, you guys. But this is where you really have to set, get a, take a seat back and allow your brain to make decisions for you that you know your heart is not gonna be as good on, okay? So as women, oftentimes, we want to be in love and we want, we are in, we are in love with the idea of being in love. You know what I mean? And so sometimes that can cloud our judgment, so to speak. So, girl, none of these girls could be my friends because as soon, at the end of the day, I'm going to let you know he ain't shit. So if you want to be with that and ride down, then go right ahead. You know, go go ahead. Go ahead and do it. So anyway, y'all, tend to swim them. Um, also wrote, um, also watched a great movie on Netflix called Intrusion. Y'all, Intru Intrusion, which is basically what it's about. Not to give any spoilers, some people intrude, get into this person's, this couple's house out in the middle of nowhere. He's an architect. His wife is there. I believe his wife is a psychiatrist and he's an architect and they have this beautiful new home, right? This movie has so many twists in it. I was like, wow, it's good. It's really good. Um, my sister's still trying to get me to watch The Witcher. I'm not watching it. 
I don't know why, but yesterday I rewatched Planet of the Apes, the Beneath the Planet of the Apes. I'm like, girl, it was interesting though. I love you. Get your hand off me, you dirty ape. I'm like, oh, ooh. <laughs> Charlton Heston. <laughs> um, Inventing Anna is on my to-do list. It is from the chick from Ozark, the um, UK girl. Um, let me tell you something. The woman in the um, house, the woman in the window in the house across from the street, that series... And again, another one that has some twist. Again, the, the title is The Woman in the Window in the House from Across the Street. So it's about this woman. She's nosy as hell. She went through a divorce. I'm not going to give all the spoilers. And so she sits in front of her window with a big glass of wine and join herself and on her cell phone. I'm like, yes, sis, we could be friends. That's the type of life I like. You know, you got your wine, you're sitting in front. But she's an alcoholic because she's, yeah. So she sees some things going on. She sees a crime that is committed. And it spirals downhill from it spirals downhill from there. I seriously thought she was crazy. I still think she was a little crazy, but again, one of those series that has some twists and turns, and I did enjoy that. Um, can't really get into Sweet Magnolia right now, but it's on my to-do list. So I will, I guess I will watch it, you know. But it's on my to-do list, but it's just not right now. So that is it, you guys. Um, let me know what y'all watching. Let me know how you guys are doing. I'm going, I'm going to end the video off by saying this. Please be mindful, you guys, of how much time you spend on social media. Social media can be toxic. It can be almost like living in a fantasy world. Um, there are still so many people out there that are hurting silently and they put on a happy face. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm okay now. I have to giggle about the situation, but there are so many people out there who are hurting silently. Just know you don't have to do that. Okay. Find someone to confide to. If you don't have any friends, write it out, pour it out, write it down. Um, tell a family member, just, just. It just breaks my heart to know that there are so many people that are in a place to where they don't have anyone, you know, and not to make everything about me, but that's one of the reasons why we chose this town because I, my, my best friend was going through a lot and she still is going through a lot. And so when she was over here a couple of days ago, I said, you know, we chose this city because I wanted to be near you. And she was like, really? I said, yes. I said, I want to be able to sit in it with you. I may not understand it, but just know you don't have to go through it by yourself. So just know that you guys, you don't have to go through anything by yourself. You know what I mean? You really don't. You shouldn't have to. So that is it. I hope you guys are well, and I hope you guys have a great week. Take care. Bye.